gentlemen, my colleagues. Um, 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 prepared text. Uh, let me just say that on behalf of the ministry and um, especially myself, because you honestly made my job much easier. Why? Because the, um, the fellowship I am feeling from across there it obviously makes my job a lot easier. And you're absolutely right. Even when we came for the joint sitting, we could see the, the mood in the, in the National Assembly. I think a lot of people misunderstand the National Assembly, especially on the executive side. A lot of people misunderstand National Ex Assembly and, the, and what oversight function is really all about. People tend to think it's, um, it's always has seen sometimes or the way it's portrayed as if it's antagonistic, whereas really it's just a way of the National Assembly parliamentarians asking us on this side, how can we make your work easier for you to deliver for the Nigerian people? And so we appreciate and are grateful for your comments and your assurances to us. And let me, on behalf of the ministry, also assure you that our doors will forever be open. We hope and pray to have closer interaction because one group or one person certainly does not have all the knowledge or the wherewithal. We have to work together. And like you quite rightly said, um, when we discovered that we actually only recently started having functional uh, rail system in a country where we, we, I mean, 2020, next year is when Vision 2020 is supposed to be completed. And if you look at the Vision 2020, we are nowhere near, nowhere near it. So we have a lot of work to do. Unfortunately, um, we're now looking at dealing with the rail at a period in time when things are extremely difficult in the country. We know how expensive rail is. And it's one of those things that we all have to put heads together to see how we can achieve it. Without any transport, without having adequate transportation that covers the entire country, there is no way in hell that there can ever be any form of development because we need to open it up from the north to the south, east to the west. It has to be opened up for us to create wealth. So we're in, the, in, we're in that situation where is which one comes first, the chicken or the egg? We need to have a rail, we don't have the money, we want to develop, we want to move from non, for, away from the oil, ex, ex, uh, de, our dependency on oil, but we don't have the infrastructure in which to do that. And that is why the President's administration right from 2015 has always spent and put a lot of emphasis on infrastructure. And much as people have sometimes misunderstood that to think that we need to spend more time or more, more money on human capital, what happens is which one comes first? So it's trying with the little amount of money that we have, trying to think outside the box, how we're going to do it. Now, before I go in this, I, I, what we've done is looked at it and said, okay, like me uh, coming from the great state of Quara, we don't have oil, our, our train doesn't work. I was never, an, I'm not an engineer, neither do I necessarily have all the knowledge of, of rail. I thought from what I've learned, I want to share with you. And in doing that started with the history of the, of the rail system in Nigeria. I think that will help you to understand where we, where we were, what happened, and how and where the, the, the country through our ministry is trying to head to, and, and the difficulties that we have along the way. So with, with that being said, um, if you permit me to go ahead, I promise I won't take too much of your time, but I think you will find it very interesting if I just go through it quickly um, for you. So after all protocols, I will start on behalf of the, of the distinguished senators. I'll never really, I'd like to, oh, sorry, I'm reading your speech. It's getting a bit confused, sorry. Okay, this brief comprises of the following. A brief background on the Nigerian railway system, like I mentioned, the rehabilitation of the narrow gauge track, development of the new railway lines and procurement and rolling stock, and then the planned expansion. This is how we've broken it down. So I will start first with the history, which I think is the most critical thing for us to um, give us the background on, on what's going on. So the Nigerian rail system is over 120 years old, from 1898. So our rail system started way back in 1898. Its development started with the operation of the first 193 kilometers narrow gauge line from the city of Lagos to Ibadan in the southwest region. The existing um, narrow gauge railway network is of length of 3,505 kilometers, consisting of two main lines, south to north of the country, that is the Lagos Kanu on the western corridor, and the Port Harcourt Maiduguri on the eastern corridor, with associated branch lines constructed in sprouts of activities between 1898 and 1964. 
Now, between 1962 and 1964, the operation of the narrow gauge railway recorded its peak when over 12 million passengers and 3 million tons of freight were transported per, per annum. A decline in the operation was experienced between 1967 and by 1984, the railway had become completely irrelevant to industries and transportation due largely to the government's investment in its development and maintenance. So by that time, by the time we got to um, 1984, basically you could say the rail was already dead. Now, the challenges occasioned by the decline have not been completely overcome. These are inadequate funding to cover the operation and the maintenance cost, the lack of rolling stock, the poor infrastructure with large maintenance gap, aging workforce and obsolete facilities. These are the problems that we still have today. Okay, so when they realize the challenges in demand for transportation engendered by rapid increase in population, the federal government in 2002 approved a 25-year railway strategic development plan. That plan included how to transform the Nigerian railway system from one of non-performing and debt-ridden to a dynamic player in the transport system, sector. Also to reduce progressively the burden of the railway sector on the federal budget by developing policies and regulations that encourage investment in the rail sector by the private sector. And also to introduce transport policies that promote the use of the rail sector and then strengthen the railway's capacity through local sourcing of maintenance and construction materials and by developing the national uh, capacity in the rail technology. Now, to implement the plan, the federal government embarked on the following. It had an emergency rehabilitation of the existing rail system and then restructuring the railway organization and the environment in which the rail was being operated and then expanding the capacity of the existing system and modernizing it. So previous governments embarked on the rehabilitation of the existing narrow gauge um, from 2009 to 2013 through various contractors. This effort, however, did not achieve the intended result as the projects were either poorly carried out, partly abandoned, because they really just didn't have the money, and or awarded to incapable contractors. So, the Nigerian narrow gauge railway network remains the only railway transport with considerable coverage over the entire country. Now, despite the inadequacies, it is the only rail, railway that connects the major commercial centers in the, in the southern and northern part of the country. Now, the immediate and concerted effort by the government to revive it will, will, resolve, will effectively resolve the problems of the port congestion of Apapa and Tinkan ports in Lagos. At present, Apapa port freight, freight is over 9, 19 million tons while um, tin can freight is 15 million, over 15 million. Now, to achieve a vibrant and functional narrow gauge railway network uh, today, the federal government is negotiating the concession of the system with a view to bringing private funds for rehabilitation of its infrastructure and, and engineering ancillaries, provision of rolling stock and management and operation. Please, it's important you note that, that this is, these are those areas which is the infrastructure, the engineering ancillaries, the provision of rolling stock, and the management operations is how these are the main factors or areas that we need to look at. Uh, when I say we, I'm talking about all of us, uh, to look at in order for us to have a working, effective railway system in the country. Now, it, this is with the aim and objective of expanding ca uh, capacity and efficiency. Now, I'm sure you remember that at one point, if you remember that the GE was all over the press, the GE was going to come and do the rail. Unfortunately, I think they looked at it and decided, and it just went quiet, it just went cold. Um, and we didn't hear anything from them again. So the, now we're looking at how to fund, through direct government funding and, lo and loans, or how to fund and upgrade the narrow gauge. So this is, well, this is just to give you a scenario of where we were. Now, so in setting the priorities for the required railway expansion, the ministry focused on creating a transportation backbone that would support both trade and economic growth of the country, taking into account end-to-end -end logistics and supply chains, and taking full cognizance of the need as enshrined in the vision to unbundle the burden of rail development for the federal government budget. So the Ministry of Transport started conducting project development for new railway lines. These included the Abuja-Kaduna rail line, which has been completed, 
the ongoing Lagos Ibadan rail line, the ongoing Itape Ajokuta Wari rail line, the Ibadan to Kanu rail line, which is planned to start soon, we hope, and the procurement of new rolling stock, the locomotives, the coaches, and the wagons. Now, we all, I'm sure most of you all have been on the Abuja uh, Kaduna uh, segment. Now, this was the first one because what happened is that um, initially, when they now um, gave the, in 2006, it was supposed to be from Lagos all the way to, um, Ka, uh, to Ka, uh, Kanu. But unfortunately, we didn't have enough money at that time. The country didn't have enough money, so it was segmented into, into six. The, the federal government decided at the time to segment it and then started off, and Abuja Kaduna was one of the segments, and decided to start that one, uh, that, to start with that, and that one has been completed. As was said, um, it was started in year 2011. It was awarded to CCECC. Um, the total cost of the project was $1.04 billion, and which was co-funded from the China Ex uh, Exim Bank of 500 million, the rest was funded by us. We have finished, it's been completed and is, and is operational. I'm sure the, um, the Nigerian Railway Corporation will give you details of how much money um, we're generating, but let me just say that um, we, we get um, about 3,700 passengers. It's a very popular, for many reasons, obviously with the security aspect as well, and also the convenience and the cost of the ticket. Um, it, it, we get over 3,700 passengers and, um, daily on that, on that route, yes. And it, it is, um, I will not necessarily say we've broken even on operational cost on that particular route. So now to deal with the current challenges, government has installed a dedicated power supply for that line, because again, that's another factor, it's electricity. And it's very good to, uh, pursuing the completion of protective fence and installation of security surveillance system to avoid interference and enable the train to, get, to gain its full operating capacity. Now, the second one is the Lagos Ibadan with extension to Lagos Port Complex in Apapa. That, this, this is the one that um, is the second segment of the modernization route. It again has been given to CCEC, CC, -E -C -C, and the total cost of that project is $1.4 billion. Um, in 2016, it was decided that the extension to, of the line to go straight into the port, yes, I was um, at an ad added cost of $94 million, thereby bringing the total cost of that project going from Apapa, Ibutemata to Ibadan to $1.5 billion. The project we um, commenced with a groundbreaking by the Vice President on the 7th, on the 7th of March 2017. Now, uh, I've included, I will not bore you with that, I've included the breakdown that that was 85% of it was financed by the uh, China Exim Bank and, and the rest, the co-finance, the rest we is coming from within our own coffers here. So the Nigerian, just to give you an example, um, uh, as you can see, the federal government counterpart funding, um, funding is $314 million just for that particular route. So um, it is believed that they will finish this rail by um, mid next year, so that should be in operation. Then we come to the last segment. So by the, you see, initially there were six segments, and now decided that, you know the what, the best thing is for us to do the Ibadan Kanu straight away rather than continue because of time. Like, like the chair said, well, like he said, what we all want to do is later on sit back um, in the future when we're talking to our great-grandchildren to say that we were part of something historic and that we, we actually we took part and played our own part in getting this, um, this project up and going. And therefore, we decided, it was decided to condense the other, other four into this one. So now it's going from Ibadan straight to um, Kanu. This is the one that um, um, we're hoping will start next year. We need a, obviously need a, went looking for money. We don't have the federal government doesn't have the money, but it was decided that um, instead of breaking up, this will be one will be a, a, a project as a double track rail from Ibadan to Kanu, which is 820 kilometers, and then there'll be a single track branch from Ushugu to Adoikiti. Um, now, the president said, as said, look, if we're going to embark on this, it's important that the rail we shouldn't just go with the track that. Would, 
that the colonials um, left with us many years ago. We need, Nigeria has grown. We have new, new capitals. It's important that the train system goes through at least each state. So you will see that that is why some are double track and some are single in order to ensure that we, in, we at least have a rail system that goes through each and every um, capital of the state. So, and so that's why there's a branch line from Oshobo to Adoikiti. Uh, and um, that one, in, so the total for that whole project is from um, Ibadan to Kano is $8.3 billion. Uh, dollars. Yeah. So, next in bank, we're looking at 85%. Uh, we'll finance 85% of the direct cost, which is, amounts to about $6.7 billion and that the federal government will pay the counterpart funding of $1.6 billion. Now, the Itakbaya Ajeokuta, as you know, the Itakbaya Ajeokuta was um, actually was completed in, in 32 years ago, in 1987, uh, after it was first conceived in 1987. So the progress of 80% has been achieved on st um, stations, tank farms, workshops, and yards. Um, building along the line. It is believed that um, there will be a trial train service from next month. Uh, commenced, sorry, commenced. I'm talking about the Ibadan, Lagos Ibadan is next month, so, and I'm eager to get onto that one. So. Okay, so the, um, the work comprises of 12, construction of 12 stations, um, completion of locomotive and rolling stock workshop, um, office, clinics, power stations, rehabilitation of the railway village. Um, we believe that this one will satisfy the demand for the transportation, the mining and mineral producing sector to contribute to the diversification of the economy. It has a total length of 576.27 kilometers single track um, standard gauge rail from Wari Port to Abu Javaya, Itakwe and Baru. Uh, also, it will support the uh, extra capacity needed in the two ports in Lagos by diverting freight to Wari, thereby reducing cost of the demurrage and attendant traf uh, transfer cost. So hopefully we'll save a lot of money on, and come with a reduction of, of uh, cargo in, in cost to the end user. So what has happened was well, for this one, we had to look for the funds. And this time, um, the ministry has signed an engineering procurement construction contract with uh, C -C -C -R -C -C I. For, because this one is actually going to be a PPP, yes. Um, and the cost of this project is estimated at 3.9 billion and construction period will be about 36 months. Um, this construction of Itakpe Lokoja Abuda Stana gauge track will also have a deep sea port in Wari to be connected to almost the completed Itakpe Wari standard gauge line of both Abuja and Wari. So the procurement of rolling stock. Now to meet the increasing demand for both passenger and freight services, on the, new, on the new standard gauge, the federal government awarded the contract um, procurement of more rolling stocks. These rolling stocks, were, which are of various uh, categories, will serve a wide range of passengers and customers on the Abuja Kaduna train service uh, and the ongoing Lagos Ibadan Railway and the Itakwe Wari Railway. As you know, that so many people, uh, it's been in the press recently, and uh, most people know that uh, because of the, uh, you know, the um, unprecedented demand on the Abuja Kaduna, we've actually had to get extra locomotives. And you know you can't literally walk into a shop and go and buy these. They have to be made. So we, we just hope that um, by the end of this year we're going to have a, uh, we've had dedicating 14 um, coaches to, to, that, to that, that route. Already two have been moved in to cope with the traffic uh, especially near the end of the year. This is one of the reasons as well that the Honorable Minister has gone off to China to go and see and ensure that we get delivery of what we have paid for for the locomotives. Also, um, now going forward, we now thought about it, that look, if we're going to be expanding um, the train system and actually having a train system that works, we need to ensure that how do we uh, make sure that we have enough coaches and wagons and part of the, what we, the federal government did through the ministry was to ensure that part of the agreement was that um, most of the coaches will be built locally in Nigeria and now decided to set up an assembly plant in Kajola in Ogun State, which I'm sure that, I don't know whether it's your constituency, but yeah, I mean, you, you have it, um, <laughs> no, so, of which um, the groundbreaking will be performed by the Vice President um, this month. 
Yes, next month. Yes, next month, which I'm sure we'll all be uh, going to that, especially you, I'm sure. Um, okay, and also, also um, so CCC are, are to invest in establishing that um, assembly plant so that we can start producing, so that will create jobs and all the attendant um, benefits that come with that. Now, um, the first batch of wagons to be produced from the production line of the plant will form part of the rolling stock being procured for the Lagos Ibadan freight train operations. Um, subsequently, other rolling stocks will be produced in the, in the, um, in the plant as its capacity increases. So, uh, always this issue, if you looked at it, that we have all these um, foreigners who are the ones building the track, we have um, that we need to try and see how we can transfer technology and knowledge. So part of that is that um, we now looked at it in the ministry and now decided that, okay, we need to have our own engineers because, for, like, this, like we said earlier, our workforce, uh, our old um, systems have changed. So we decided to have engineers and technicians under study. So a lot of you see that we've embarked on a program to ensure that the relevant um, officers of the ministry, the railways, uh, NRC, acquire the required practical knowledge and skills for maintaining the rolling really stocks. So to this end, about 23 relevant officers, mostly from NRC, have been selected to attend the program in China, which is to last for about three to, two to three months at the various rolling stocks manufacturers um, in, in China. So the first batch comprised of 12 officers. They've already started in September, uh, while the second batch of another 11 are scheduled to also go by March next year. Um, it's also important to note that as of now, we have 60 young Nigerians um, who are understudying railway engineering and science courses in China sponsored by the contractor CCECC on the initiative of the ministry with the intent of trans technology transfer and capacity building. And some of the engineers from the ministry and NRC and the Nigeria Society of Engineers are also, atta are also attached to CCECC um, and also attached to um, the consultant which is Team Nigeria at no cost to us um, also to learn and I'm sure when we at any time when you're going on your oversight, you'll be pleased to, I'm sure you'll see them and learn that this was done deliberately for us to ensure that um, the next generation of Nigerians don't miss out on, on the possibilities and the businesses and wealth and knowledge from that, from the industry. So that's where we are right now. Then we now look at what's the, what's the future, what's the, what's the plan? So, uh, in, uh, the main thing is just to ensure that every, at every corner of Nigeria has a working train system for both freight and passenger. So there are three or that areas we're looking at, and because you've seen from the cost of, 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 of a rail system, it's so expensive that we need, we've now sat there to look at how can we bring in private sector or look literally find how we can bring the money in. And the only thing to do is also to look at PPP, look at partnerships from different people. So there's the Port Harcourt. So one of the ones that um, we're looking at are Port Harcourt to Maiduguri standard gauge railway with associated branch lines, industrial park, and Bonnie's um, deep, sea, deep sea port. Um, this planned project has a total length of 2,000 uh, rail, kilometer rail line, including five branch lines. Those lines will connect 17 states. Um, and that's rivers, Abia, Enugu, Benue, Nasarawa, Kaduna, Plateau, Bauchi, Gombe, Yobe, and Bornu from the southern to the northern hemisphere of the eastern flank of Nigeria. Flank of Nigeria. The, the, uh, the branch lines will connect nearly, like I said earlier, nearly all the nearby states to the main line and then transverse the following states, Imo, Anambra, Eboin, Adamawa, Taraba, and uh, FCT. So the line will connect the oil producing states, the south, south, and southeast, to the major agricultural producing states of the northern flank of the country. So for viability and contribution to the economic growth, it is complemented by an industrial park and a um, Boni deep sea port. It is estimated to cost us $14 billion and completion period is, is four years. Now, um, it will also open up the interland to facilitate exploration of minerals and agricultural resources 
in conformity with the federal government policy or diversification of the economy from mono economy of oil dependence and evacuation of freight from the rivers port to other parts of the country. The second one is the, is the Kanu to uh, Maradi in uh, uh, Niger Republic, um, the single track standard gauge rail. This one, the length is only 378 kilometers, including a branch line to Dutse, uh, neighboring West African countries, connecting to it and providing transport backbone, uh, which will in turn foster trade and commercial activities in the sub-region. It is estimated to cost just the $1.85 billion, um, excluding rolling stock, with a completion period of two and a half years. And then we have the coastal railway project. Um, the ministry advocates to see the ports operating the south-south, especially in Port Harcourt and Calabar. We are also advocating to start um, execution of the coastal rail line in segments, especially considering the quest for development of railway projects by the government and the capacity to fund this expensive infrastructure. So the ministry is considering the development of the coastal line to start from Port Harcourt to Wari and Benin, to Onicha, from where the Maiduguri line can now be um, connected. And now the other major reasons for these, um, to, for these identify rail lines, I think is pretty obvious, as we mentioned earlier, is the facility and the possibility of movement of passengers, and it's projected that you have a traffic volume of about 15 million Nigerians per, per annum. It will create job opportunities for both skilled and unskilled, promote an integrated transportation system across the country and reduce the cost of production of goods and services. And obviously it congest traffic on the roads, thereby reduce the cost of road maintenance. So th those are the, um, the major um, um, reasons behind it. And obviously we know that um, the industrial sectors that would benefit from the rail, you know, agriculture, petroleum, beverages, textiles, pulp, pulp and paper, electricity, electrical and electronics, solid minerals, and cement. And obviously the revenue windows for all the rails are, are, are there, the property taxes, advertising, marketing, concessions. Uh, I mean, the, the, full, uh, the complete right of way, leasing, digital technology, non-transit non parking and utility fees. So, Mr. Chairman, with that, um, I hope that I have given you um, uh, uh, some historical behind the rail and, and, and also I hope I've exposed to you the, the difficulty that we both face in trying to see, we, I don't think anybody is, is against the, the system, is how we're going to fund it um, and how we can try and get the money to fund it um, and so for that is also to see how um, we make it as effective. It's one thing to have the train system, it's another thing for it to run effectively. And one of the things that the ministry will be looking at is that, which will obviously will have to come to, to, to National Assembly, is perhaps, because uh, is to look at the NRC in itself, the way it's, everything's being managed, that perhaps we separate the authority from the management or what have you, and this is something I hope we're all going to rub minds together on. And with that, I think, um, if, if you permit me, I think uh, um, perhaps the NRC has something to add, especially vis-a-vis -vis the cost of the implementation, if, if I remember that's the brief that I, I read here, in um, the extensive performance vis-a-vis -vis capital projects budgeted. If there's anything else you want to add. Do I have the permission of... Nothing to add? I said it all. <laughs> No, anything, anybody has anything to add? I think um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. You see what is happening there. You know, we have a, lot, a long, long way to go. But I will reserve my question. I want to call on my colleagues. Kanu uh, to the Potako to uh, Maiduguri. Yes, as you know, the issue is that um, in the budget, in the 2020 budget, I mean, we were literally begging for money, extra money, in order to just meet up our commitment on, on the existing rails that are ongoing. 
Yes, unfortunately, the reality on ground is simply there just isn't enough funds to cover just our counterpart funding of, it, of, of the real that's going on. So, uh, this, to start the Potako to Maiduguri, to get the Kanu to Niger Republic and all these, these are what I was telling you, that these are the plans that um, we on this side feel that if we have all these, all these different rail systems, these other rail projects going, we will have covered the entire country. So we're looking, this is where we're hoping that we need PPP. We need to go and look for private uh, investors as well to come and see how we can fund these projects. So it, they have not even started. We've just done the, um, the, the worked out the projects in which you want to do on, on that one. You'll come back to that one, yes. Um, let me just read um, what uh, somebody graciously has found. Yes, the federal government is only, um, on, I'll come back to that one. Sorry, I know the question. On what Honorable Dan Linton just asked, the white China? Basically, because they're the ones that have the money. Initially, we're looking at, at, at other people, GE, but they didn't have the interest. Basically, that China is the one that has the funds, that's willing to lend you 85% of the money. Nobody else has the funds. And, and, at, at concession and, and the rate and the, and the interest rate in which they keep it, you know the problem is that, you know, we all know about the problem when you don't have enough money, but we don't understand the problem when you have too much money, which is also <laughs> the situation in which China finds itself. So, which is why you see the mass expansion and China's willingness to, to invest um, or actually give loans, concessionary loans to different nations. They were the only ones that were willing to give us single digit funding, funds, to go into this project. So, it's not that um, they didn't consider, or we didn't, Nigeria didn't consider other countries, but this particular um, um, loan is because China was the one that had given us favorable enough terms for us to embark on it. However, having said that, they're limited in what they want. Initially, they to um, lend you money for, on the, st uh, on the um, standard gauge, which is what took time, on, yes, um, and also delayed the project. But their vision and our vision did not come together. Now, some of this, we have to look at direct loan at not such favorable um, rates. We have to look at pri uh, private sector, other, other than um, um, government to government, in order to do all the others. So these are um, areas that we're all trying to explore to get all these other, er other tracks, um, projects on to come on board on the issue of China. On the issue of the assets being insured, I, I'm very sure that the assets are insured. I will ask NRC to come. Uh, NRC will, uh, will answer that. But all, all um, Assets are insured, the passengers are insured, like anything. Like it, uh, rail is just like, um, like uh, what do you call them, those um, um, lorries. You have to insure. It's insurance. You have to have insurance for you to be on, on the road. So they are insured. Yes, passenger in transit, goods in transit insurance, they're all included in the price of the tickets. So, uh, yes, passengers are insured as well. Um, on the issue being mentioned on the last one, excuse me, let me just take the paper, on are we the ones funding the Kanu the to Niger Republic? We're looking for, we're looking for um, investors. It's what we're saying is that by the time you, you literally have the train going right into the neck to, Kanu is a commercial, it's our, our commercial hub in the north. This Maradi is also the commercial hub in, um, uh, in Niger Republic. It's a good business venture. It makes sense for Nigeria, it makes sense for them. And we will literally throw it open to see if find investors. It's a PPP that we're trying to do on that one. Um, uh, federal government is only funding it apparently to, our, to our, our borders. The project is part of the joint ECOWAS corridor, yes, adap adopted for interconnectivity along the ECOWAS subregion. So each country will do its own and it, it continues. Also, um, we're discussing with other, yes, we're discussing with other people, which is also why um, Mr. President has said um, yeah, there's a trip. We're looking for funds. We're literally looking for funds from everybody, um, for anybody that can give us the funds for us to develop this sector um, at a favorable, at something that makes sense. Um, and China, is, like I said, as China has been the most responsive, 
We've even had um, people look at uh, Portugal. We have a Portuguese um, who's looking at um, the Kanu Maradi um, sector who are interested. I mean, we throw it open here if you happen to know anybody who's willing to. No, no, no. I've been serious. I've been serious. If we know. <laughs> <laughs> when you were making your comment, yeah. two of our colleagues came in again. You, uh, I'd like to uh, thank Mr. for having identified the water council made the great independent engagement with proposal as one of the most important in the part of the, in, in the world of planning here because it transpires into about 17 states. Mm -hmm. I also would like to recognize what uh, Dr. Fokachua just asked, because everything appears to come from uh, that it didn't work. What, what is the you know, likelihood that this will eventually you know, come to fruition? If it is left, left as a PPP uh, concession, why don't we at the same time borrow the money now that we are borrowing from China and continue borrowing from China and complete the process? That's my question. This one that will pass to you state anyway. <laughs> Unfortunately, the, he who has the funds determines what uh, they're, uh, they're willing to fund or not fund. Um, already there, theirs is that the, the, the Lagos to Kano is the main one that they are willing to give at a good rate of interest. Yes, and that is why we're doing that. But we recognize that once we start, we started it now, let's try. Like I said, the president said, we must have a rail system that goes through each and every state. And that, and that, and that particular one, the Potako to Maiduguri, 17 out of 36 states, 17. So we are talking, we're not being, uh, this time we're not depending on one main uh, person to come and start t taking our time and talking. We're literally going everywhere looking and seeing, trying to um, brainstorm with different companies, different governments, yes, different aspects that can come together and let us do this. This, this until we do that particular one as well, it just makes, um, it means that um, the all, all efforts is just like a drop in the ocean. We need to connect. Imagine the connectivity of 17 states being able to have access. It's the only way. So we're Honestly, we're not relying on one person. We're moving, we're going around, trying to look, talk to different countries, different investors in different places. Yes, um, we've borrowed so much from, from China. We're not the only uh, agency in Nigeria borrowing from China. Um, they themselves, uh, you know, their economy is slowing down. They're reducing the amount of money they themselves are putting out. Uh, right now, we're in talking to them I'm borrowing about, correct me if I'm wrong, five point, about 5.5, 5.5 billion dollars to do this last uh, segment of Ibadan to Kano. We have to go and borrow, that's why the minister is actually not here. We're, uh, we're at, we're, the discussions have gone to an advanced stage and we're hoping to sign off very soon to be able to commence that. So whilst they're doing that, we're looking for our own counterpart funding for, this, for that particular project. So we're already in the midst of borrowing yet another 5.5 billion dollars for the Ibadan to, um, to Kano track. So that is where we are. We're honestly open to everybody and anybody who can give us favorable track to get that. It is one of the priorities. And um, apart from the fact it goes through your, your state, um, um, it, is a very, it is very, very important. We, we accept that, we realize that, and it will be a feather to everybody's cap for us to be able to, to, to get that off and going. Um, also, on the on um, the question that <laughs> you you asked, um, many have I too have thought it. Why didn't they start from Milan? I mean, why did they have to start <laughs> from Lagos? <laughs> but but, um, but um, really, um, the it, they started. The, it all started um, the the Abuja Khan, the Abuja Kaduna. Yes, was the first phase. It didn't all start from Lagos. The first phase was Abuja Kaduna. And the reason for, for that was really was the cheapest, the one that we could afford to do our counterpart funding. 
Um, now the next, the next phase is now is the one that we're just about to finish, the Lagos Ibadan. Yes, and the next one is now the last one that we're looking for, that we're about to sign or hoping that China will give us the 5.5, is the Ibadan to Kano, and it will start from Kano. We're going to start from, from Kano and walk back this way. Yes, 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 we are. Yes. So, because believe me, many other people have said that as well. <laughs> so, we're starting from Kanu um, to Ibado, so that at least that part of the, the country can also, uh, because obviously, anytime there's construction, anything going on, there are benefits, mm -hmm. there are benefits um, to the community, there are indirect jobs and direct jobs. So, we've done this, way, we're coming back this way. Um, and the Wari Itakwe uh, Abuja started the Wari. So, we've tried to do start. Yes, try to do that. Very important balancing. Um, I don't know if I answered all. Yeah. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Do not suffocate us academically. How are we going to pay them back? That's my first question. Number two is uh, on the issue of IGR. Well, I will not call it IGR because I don't know what arrangement you have concerning the Kaduna, Abuja, Railway, Line mm -hmm. where a lot of money is being made, and uh, as we are talking, you also said it in your presentation that the number of uh, workers we have are not even sufficient. Mm -hmm. How are we using these monies that we are generating? Are they going towards repayment or going towards maintenance? What are the revenues generated being used for currently, and what do you plan? In the future, when we commission the labels Ibadan and later the Ibadan Kano, how are we going to take care of it? We are going to answer that. That brings me to the next mm -hmm. question on the management of the railway lines. Mm -hmm. As students of history, our professor is here. We all know why railway corporation collapsed. Yeah. We know that it was more or less mismanagement. Uh, mismanagement. Nigerian railway. Uh, Nigerian Airways, all viable projects that were made to actually mm -hmm. die for Nigeria. What lesson are we taking from there? I hope by the time we complete all these projects, we will not make the same mistake of giving government Nigerian Railways to manage these uh, facilities. Because if we should do that, I believe we might not be able to actually realize the key objective because it might repeat itself at the end of the day. Then, uh, issue of ticketing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you are also aware of the racketeering mm -hmm. that is happening. Going to buy tickets, either from Abuja or Kaduna, is like a war. Particularly when you are targeting weekends on Fridays from Abuja mm -hmm. to Kaduna, it will take you hours and hours and it takes you the divine intervention of going to get a ticket at the official rate. Even where you are going to buy from the black market, it is not easy to buy. Majority of passengers are made to, to pay and stand because there are no available spaces. What arrangements are you making for us to modernize our system of selling tickets? It's so easy if the Nigeria, the, the, the Nigeria Aviation has gone into selling tickets by way of online. online. Why must we have to be constrained and restricted in buying tickets? Physically. Queuing up for hours. Only if you don't like the tickets are not there. So we want to know your plan as far as that is concerned. And then finally, Nigerian Institute of Transport Technology is about the only institution I think we have on the transport ministry that uh, is established or primarily established to help in the transportation and logistics uh, sector of this country. You made mention of collaboration with China in terms of training and so on and so forth. And I thought when you were talking, you would make uh, mention of uh, training the trainers. Mm -hmm. Because if we have such a giant institute with a lot of personnel, the first thing that we need to do in the ministry is to say, since railway is now the in thing 
It is the, 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 the sector that we are going to concentrate more. Let us also devote resources in ensuring the NIGT staff are well trained to take over the training aspect of Nigeria Railway Corporation, Nigeria Railway Sector Competition. Mm -hmm. So, without even mentioning that, I just want to suggest that we need to start with the agencies under the ministry that we can be able to engage and use so that they can be able to help in the training of middle level and senior management cadre of the railway sector. Mm -hmm. I does not mention it often enough. Let me um, on, on, say on his behalf, just in case he doesn't mention, I know he'll mention it, but not enough, mm -hmm. is that we, we need, he, they need funding, 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 funding. They need more and more funding, which is why we're here with, national, with you, um, National Assembly, that in or part of your oversight function, I hope you will visit and see that they need to modernize, they need more money, and they need more funds. Um, be that, as I've said that, I permit me to allow um, NITT to give you a very short brief on what, you do, what they're doing, especially vis-a-vis -vis, um, the new railway um, system. Thank you. The Iraqi Institute of Transport Technology Zaria was conceived at the Railway Institute way back in 1956. And it was developed in the Modal Institute in 1978. And it was approved by government to be established in 1980. The law establishing the institute came into effect in 1986. So we had our first program as the Giant Institute of Technology in 1986. It was commissioned in Zaria in 1992 and upgraded into a great effort. The institute was established to address deficiency in management and maintenance of transport infrastructure in the country to look at inefficiency and low productivity in the transport sector, to address low level of professionalism in the industry, and arrest depreciation of capital investment and high expenditure in overseas training. The institute was mandated to provide training for personnel employed in the transport, all modes of transport. It was established to serve as a, at the beginning established as a railway institute, but um, gradually the government upgraded it to serve all other modes of transport. So the institute has developed capacity in all modes of transport, not only railway, maritime, air, and land transport. It has the capacity to provide all the necessary training required in the transport and in the railway industry. We have trained our staff locally and internationally, and they have capacity to provide the necessary training. We have provided equipment in our laboratories, both in Zaria and in our office centers, to provide these levels of training. So the institute is ready to take part in the modernization project of the railway system. Like the Honorable Minister has mentioned, what we require is what we require is additional funding to provide more facilities and infrastructure to serve the emerging railway systems in the country. At that price and cannot see what he has done wrong and why they're stopping it. The issue, which is just incredible, that somebody will actually go to court, but they have. The issue with the, the issue with the ticketing, really, is the fact that the unprecedented traffic was not in the planning when they were looking at that route, when they did the survey uh, on that route, was this what we're having now was not what was 
um, envisaged when they were doing um, the planning, during the planning stage. Permit me to give you some, some figures. That um, in January to December of 2017, total passengers, yes, for that year were 353,146. A year later, in 2018, January to December, was 732,016. But, yeah, but in January to June, six months, in 2019, we're already on 551,860. Um, so it, it wasn't envisaged. So they thought that, you know, you have the, uh, different stations require different um, uh, traffic or have different traffic. So it was uh, the planners at the time for well, they just go, go and buy ticket and go. Did not expect the traffic. What has happened now is that because of this unprecedented traffic, now it's looking at people going PPP, they're going the, the uh, they've gotten, RCRC has got given the um, new objection uh, certificate. It's currently with BPP to get its own new uh, objection certificate and then it goes to FEC. Um, for approval for it to be online. It's a pity that, uh, because, I mean, it's just, it creates so much havoc. Yes, it creates so much havoc, and, um, and the distortion is just uh, ridiculous. But also part of the delay, please correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, um, is also this issue of the fact that they have to fence the, uh, the whole um, um, station. They had so many other things they had, apparently has to come first before the ticketing. So, but obviously because of what has happened now, especially on that route, and near the end of the year, they're looking at, we really need to start this to bring all that commotion to an end. Yes. Um, also, a question was asked about um, mismanagement. Like I mentioned earlier, that one of the things that the ministry we're looking at, and we would, honestly would love to work with, with the National Assembly on, is for all, all of us to put our heads together to see the unbundling of the NRC, of the going forward from the experiences of the uh, lessons we've learned from the past and others that we've seen. Is the right now NRC is a regulatory system, is a regulatory body, is also the one op operating and managing? Does it is that? Does that, would that make sense going forward? So we have to look at the act, look at what is the best system. Is it from, like from NRC, we get three or four different agencies or bodies that will look at taking part? Is it that we're going to, like you said, is it that the um, federal government is the one going to manage? Is it that we're going to look at creating a managing company? Who will be the managers? Is it going to be a PPP? These are things that we we'll have to uh, all work out. I'm hoping that we'll work with National Assembly and look at it. Um, then you are, the question was asked, how much money have we borrowed thus far? And uh, the figures I am having, please, again, I stand to be corrected, is about $1.7 to $2 billion. Yes, $1.7, $1.72 billion. We borrowed $500 million for the Abuja Kaduna. We borrowed um, about $1.2 billion for the construction, just for the construction of the Lagos Ibadan. The one we're now looking at for the 840 kilometers, am I right? 840 kilometers is the Ibadan to Kanu, which is the 5.5 billion. Yes, okay, Kanu to Ibadan. Yes. <laughs> yes. Kanu is Kanu to Ibadan, not passing the lorry. Yes, that one. Yes, yes, the Kanu to Ibadan, not passing the lorry, 5.5 billion yes, um, um, dollars that we're looking at borrowing. Um, and honestly, it's the issue is the counterpart funding. Our own 15% is always what is the, the, the issue. Um, so it's not uh, like somebody was saying the other day, you know, people, we tend to over worry about how much de uh, debt, or people say, oh, we borrow some money, we have a deficit, deficit. If we look at all these other countries, you and I know, the, the deficit, the American deficit is high, even China. I don't think anybody built a real system that did not own uh, own debt. Debt is not a, 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 a bad thing. It's, like you said, it's managing your debt and making sure that it, um, I am not an accountant. I see it seems as if everybody from Kaduna is an accountant. I am not an accountant. <laughs> but my, I am here with my accountant and he knows that debt is not a bad thing. You know, we need to borrow. It's not necessarily the size of the debt. It's how we manage our, our debt. Um, I, th I think I've answered. No, no. Which one? Oh, okay.
Thank you. Well, look at the presentation, look at the way we talk, look at the knowledge we were able to pass to each other. It's like a lawyer that becomes a judge. It's always easier for him where any lawyer comes in to know what to say. Never be angry. Our questions were germane. Our questions were genuine. Our question was for the nation. And look at the way everybody said, when you were asked and when you were making your own presentation, we were happy. All what is required is that the beginning is very, very smooth. The pick off. Along the line, we will definitely have some turbulence pumping. Yeah, it's normal. It's normal. It's just see that it's our normal routine job. You see, when they come to, like you rightly said, you've gone on oversight function, you know what it is. When we come to our, on our oversight function, just see all that. These are our colleagues that are here to check things. Not, we are not auditor. We don't which on in the National Assembly. So we won't tell you that story, you know. The moment things move on smoothly, we will be happy. And at the end of the day, when we are also giving our own stock to our own principal that send us that, look, what is happening in your committee, you'll be able to say, oh, the committee is doing well. They are doing well for the nation. Having said this, uh, my colleague, thank you very much. I appreciate every one of you. Look at it. You are starting well. Have done well within us. There are times you assess yourself. Even the, if you see the attendance, everybody is here because it's not because of anything. The love for the nation, and we know we can take this country where we ought to be. That's what I said, and I believe so much that if we're able to solve our real system, the sky is the limit. Having said this. And I call for a judgment of the uh, sorry, sorry, an information. We have agreed with our colleagues from the house. Your budget defense is on the twenty first of this month. To the clerks of the two committee, they will write you and then we will appreciate one thing. Get us your budget at least two or three days before that time. Two or three days before that time. It's always better so that we'll be able to cross check, see the nitty gritty, where we, excuse me, where we can assist. We'll be able to assist by sending the budget to us. You are coming at two o'clock and bringing it at ten thirty. It's not acceptable, except if you want to go and come back. But we've already agreed to today's Monday. That's upper Monday. Today's Monday. That's upper Monday. You can see you have enough time. And you already you know you are part and parcel of the people that, present, uh, that prepare the budget. So we just want to have it preferably by Friday so that we can use the weekend to flip through so that when you come, we can tell you page 19, page 2, page 3. It will be easier and we will be able to won't waste time. And then when we now, after you, after your own defense, when we are now meeting the appropriation team, we'll be able to face them and tell them, yes, we can defend this because we are aware and we are able to approve it. Thank you very much. Having said it, can I have any of my colleagues to move for adjournment? To move our adjournment? Okay. Okay. Thank you. The... <laughs> the... the no, we've already taken oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. 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 Oh, well, thank you. Um, what is wonderful about today's uh, interactive session with the National Assembly uh, Committees on Land Transport is that you can see that we all both recognize the importance of having synergy and working together. Because the ministry alone does not have all the answers, neither do we need the help of the National Assembly. And that we know the importance of, of, of transportation system, which is why the president, you see that uh, Minister of Transport as well as Power and Works and Housing got a large chunk 
of the budget because we need to develop the infrastructure. So um, with my two brothers here and the committee members, I know that we're on a, on a good path and a, big, a wonderful beginning. And it will be there, we hope, and I'm sure that the press, you will follow through and come with us as we journey through the development of the rail system in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, how will your committee ensure that Nigeria have the dividends of democracy through the land transport? Well, you can see it from the presentation of the Honorable Minister. Already, they already have the plan for the Lagos, Ibada, Ibada, Kano Road. And there's the other eastern side, that is Potako, straight to Meduguri. That is not even the beautiful aspect of it. They now have these branches to other areas where it can be easier to link the main road. It may take time, but you can see that the foundation and the focus is there and we'll be able to reach there, God willing. The truth of the matter is that the money is not there now, but with PPP, if we get people and stabilize our economy and we're able to attract investors, I can bet you, by the time we solve the problem of electricity, land transport, the development and where we used to be, we just come back and the sky will be our limit. Thank you. Thank you. The issue of complementing is the issue of uh, collaborating. Um, the committees of the Senate and the House are one and the same. We are all established primarily to work and partner with the executive in ensuring that the common man gets the desired dividend of democracy. And today, I'm proud to say that what we have discussed testifies beyond any reasonable doubt that the Ninth Assembly the committees of land transport and the Federal Ministry of Transport will work together as one family. And I want to assure Nigerians that this committee and the ministry is going to write its name in gold, that we are going to set history and make sure that things that we will do will benefit not only us, not only our children, but our great-grandchildren will also start to benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Thank you so much.